Bike for Thursdays. It is. Can I have a bike for it, please? Yeah, I'm just going to do it for you. Not really. I don't wish that upon him. I like him too much. <laughs> my TT bike is really uncomfortable. <laughs> but why is really it Really uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Because my elbows hit my knees. I'm all cramped up. I'm probably not very aero. And I was really sore after the race that I did on it. So, can we fix that? Didn't you win the race, though? I beat George. You got one of these? I got one of those. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's new, for like GoPro. New Zero. So then we, did yeah, that work? Yeah. I could just film the whole thing and put it on my YouTube channel. Have you got one? Yeah, it's not very good though. Oh. Because I upload like once a year to it. More than Lawrence. More than Lawrence. All right, good morning. Welcome to today's video. Welcome to my TT bike fit. First thing James is doing is switching my position from the bike onto the jig so we can fit on there. Okay, <laughs> why have you got a time trial bike? Do some TTs. What distance? Just 10 miles? Maybe 25. That's all we're fitting for. Because the position's different, or should be different, for like 10 to 25s versus something like 50. So sustainability starts to come into it, rather than just out and out aero. Tiny. You've got to put the visor on. Otherwise you look like a twat. You still look like a twat. I feel like I'm like, I'm like reaching further for like. Okay, so you feel unstable, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 get rid of the lid for us, because you're, you're not going to fucking oh, make it happen. Your left leg extends about five degrees more than your right. And this is like the thing with a lot of bike fitting. You see, you see like the, the, the analysis from one side and one side only. It's usually the right side. So you get this uh, sugar-coated uh, version of what the position looks like. You've also got to look at it from behind. So the reason, you know, you're extending your left leg more than you are your right, which begs the question, why? It's because you are wonky AF. Like watching Lawrence Carpenter ride a bike. So... Oh, my right knee comes in so much. These dots of PSIS, it's either side of the pelvis. Essentially, yes, your right knee comes in because this is what's happening is a bit of that. So as you drive off to the right hand side, your right knee comes in. A lot of fitting te teaches you to put a load of wedging in to try and correct it, but actually what we need to do is look at what's posturally going on. It might be because of the saddle, but it could be because of the saddle as well. I mean, you don't like the saddle. You've already, you've already said it makes you go numb. Uh, if we look at fresh mapping footage, there's more pressure on the left-hand side than there is on the right, um, which, you know, again, is consistent with how you're sat. Most of your feedback off camera has been that you, you, don't, you don't feel stable, you don't feel comfortable. You basically sat as though you're being kicked in the genitals constantly. We either need to do something with this saddle or get rid of it. I think for the most part, the rest of it all looks pretty good. You know, the reach looks good. I mean, what, what we might do today is just experiment with take the front end lower, maybe, because we can. Just see what happens, shits and giggles. Um, Sandy Edwards. Lovely camera with you, how are you? Do you like the kit, by the way? Yeah. So, yeah. So we're gonna have a go at lower in the front end. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be careful though. I've increased the resistance, so we am still only doing 200 watts. We want to understand uh, what or how this influences your hip function because as we start coming down lower, we're gonna start impinging the hips and potentially reducing power power output for your ability to sustain power. Yeah. Now I'm hit, I'm hitting my knees on my elbows. So you just adjusted the crank length. Do people on TT bikes, triathlon bikes, tend to use a shorter crank? Like what's the done thing and why? There's two kind of camps, isn't there? There's the old school TT guys that run 175s so for big levers, um, which doesn't really work because it impinges the hips. And there's also this, this school of people who are going really, really short. And I think at the end of the day, there isn't really a formulaic way of approaching it. It depends on rider functionality, depends on how extreme the position is, depends on uh, hip function, flexibility, strength, all of these kind of things. So the only way of understanding optimal crank length is to test it. That's how you've got to do it. There's no, you know, it's got, it's got very little correlation to femur length and all this kind of stuff. Generally speaking, I use crank length reduction as a means of improving hip function, enabling a rider to get over the top of the stroke. So they, it redu reduces the amount that they impinge their hips. However, there comes a point where you go so short, you start to reduce torque effectiveness. And this is what I come to find with some people who are moving to, like, if you've got like a, someone who's Andy's height, running a 165 millimeter crank, they st the whole leverage element starts to come into it. Because actually it's quite, a, it's quite a short crank for someone who runs like a 78 centimeter saddle height. So I think you have to keep 
crank length relative at the same time. But it's, at the end of the day, it's done on an individual basis. You can't generalize with this stuff. There isn't, there's a lot of talk about short crank is better, but it's not, it's not always better. Are there any specifics to time trialing? Is your further- The nature of time trial bikes having a lower front end and the way that your pelvis is orientated, i.e. slightly rolled further forward, you have a predisposition to closing down the hips, all right? Now, that's generally where the shorter crank length thing comes in. But again, you know, you can go too short. On this start size of bike, we, I've experimented with 155, which is which is available in some- Super in some short. Bike bikes. Well, I mean, Nuria rides a 155, but she's five foot one. And that keeps it relative. I mean, furthermore, if you think that the, in, in generally speaking, the shortest crank length that's commercially available, generally speaking, is 165. The, the longest that's usually commercially available is 175. Yes, I know manufacturers make other sizes, but these are the sizes you generally find on bikes. If you consider that there's only 10 mil difference there versus you think the shortest saddle height I've done is, well, Giles Harris is about 50 centimeters versus about you know, 85 centimeters. There's like a 40 centimeter difference in saddle height. So the, the point I'm making is that uh, quite often riders at the very, very short, uh, at the shorter end of the spectrum, lower saddle height, need a short crank than a 165. Riders at the extremes of, of the, the higher saddle height spectrum need a longer crank. But for the sake of time trial, generally speaking, shorter crank tends to, tends to improve things. As we just found, you know, we, we went we went narrow 165 crank and your cadence got, well, goes up like 10 RPM. We're going, we went narrower and you didn't like it. So we're getting wider. So, uh, you I know. I think having this triangle kind of as big as possible, I know there's an aerodynamic benefit to be had with them narrower, but not if you're gonna not hold that position because you're uncomfortable, because well, you're not confident. There's that, there's also the ability to breathe. If they're too close together, I found that you, you end up with quite a lot of tension in your upper back. So the rider ends up doing a lot of this, which again reduces their ability to breathe. And I think you know breathing is a fairly, fairly fundamental part of, of performance. When I did so. my 10 miles, I couldn't breathe for any of it. I'm pretty sure I only took one breath. Yeah, it was How was the bun run? It was fast, wasn't it? It was fast, yeah, I got dropped, but I had an excuse because my wheel was buckled. His it's wheel is at, it is actually buckled. They're repairing it right now. As we speak. As we speak. Just about that. Heard it all before, Andy. You know what? I was late as well this morning. You're both always late. You're, both you're late. the two latest people that I know. I call them up. But you should have seen this guy. Oh my god. Mine was 45 minutes. Oh no, <laughs> not again. You're an idiot. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. It's good to see you with dots on. The dots, Showing they end up uh, just everywhere, don't they, for the next yeah, three do. weeks? They're not sticky compared to some dots. I've seen some dots which just last forever. Next! Yay! Yeah. It's like a pair of legs with a helmet on top. <laughs> How's that? Looks crazy. It's so hot, I can't get it off. Did you hear about the 66 year old man who got run over by a purple Rolls Royce last night? No. Was it Benedict Cumberbatch? No. It He's run people over before. So I don't think these will be allowed in UCI competition. Uh, at this angle. This is what I rode when I was racing, so significantly more horizontal. It's just more comfortable when they're tilted though. You came sick for the Nationals, didn't you? A few years ago now, yes. How much time did you spend on the TT bike before? Because it was getting resprayed or something, so I think it arrived the week before or something like that. <laughs> nice. And I was like, yeah, I got, I got uh, two rides in it. Uh, but the TT was very hilly, so it suited me quite quite well. Hello. Absolutely fine. Whoa. Won't fight. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, really, so much lower. It looks so much better. That's the main thing, right? <laughs> oh, you look great. What? My knees touch my elbows. It's no good. Terrible position. See you later. See you later, mate. Swapping one poochie for another. We haven't forgotten about you. Do you want this? No. Yeah, I can pop it on. Oh, that's so much better. Saddle down five mil, not by much. Uh, but we take the front end down a lot lower, 30 mil lower. We've also increased the elevation of the extensions to give you this kind of very popular mantis position, but you quite liked it. We experimented with it and you know, you, you quite liked it. Feels more secure. I'll tell you what, the, the more angle the bars had, the more I could like just rest against them and push against them. Relax yeah, into totally it. Bad, but I think the, the one disclaimer to that is that can't, some people might apply it to their position because they've not got the saddle set up properly or if the saddle's too high, it results in like sliding off the front of the saddle. So <clears throat> applying that change to 
the front end can just simply result in you, you know, with a lot of weight on the front of the bike, which particularly for the more endurance orientated uh, athletes, you're gonna end up with a lot of neck and shoulder tension and you're gonna be crippled when you get off the bike. So I think, you know, make sure the back end of the bike's right first, then deal with the front end. Uh, we've played around with crank length, hasn't really yielded much of a difference for you. Uh, but I think we need to go and test this in the real world first. And then, you know, this is the kind of starting point. You go out, give me some feedback, and then we'll we'll have a go at it again. But it looks better, right? Oh, uh, it feels better. <laughs> it feels so much more comfortable, man. What's that? Coca-Cola with a quadruple shot of whiskey in it. Oh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs>